G'day, I'm Patrick from Douglas Fur Design. Welcome to the Router Bits. I'm gonna have a mess around with this uh, flute and bead set today. Basically it's a pair of matched router bits, one's a fluting bit, one's a beading set, and you use them to create curved objects like this out of lots and lots of strips of timber like this. Now this set is often called a canoe joint bit or a canoe joint set because as you can imagine, it is used for building curved solid timber hulls for canoes and also other curved objects like hot tubs or planter boxes or wherever you need some sort of curved timber face. Now these are designed to be used with timber which is 6.4 mils thick which I believe is a, some sort of division from the imperial system. I should know that but I work in metric like most of the world. To make anything out of these router bits you're going to have to create lots of timber strips that are 6.4 mils thick and the width of those pieces can be as narrow or as wide as you'd like, within reason. The narrower the pieces, the smoother the curve is going to be because there are more faces to create that curve. So the curve in this piece, uh, each strip was started out as about 20 mils and by the time I put the flute and bead they go down to about 15 roughly. I also have some pieces here which are 40 mil wide and once I flute and bead them they'll be a little narrower and you can see that it's a much more geometric shape rather than a true curve. So it kind of depends on what sort of finish you are looking for. If you did want this to be a perfectly smooth curve with no visible lines, you would just need to sand it a lot to remove a fair bit of material to get rid of those lines. Now, I glued this up tightly and I don't mind those lines there, but it'd be interesting to experiment to see if I could get rid of them. I just think you'd have to remove quite a lot of material the outside is obviously a lot easier because you can sand off all of those high edges and get a much smoother curve. Now this stuff was just some Jarrah that I ripped into strips and it worked perfectly for this. You could use alternating timbers if you wanted a striped effect, do whatever you want. The world is your oyster, so to speak. To create the curves with this, because you've got a matching uh, bead and a flute, they can pivot to almost any angle. If you go too steep, you're gonna get a gap on one side and it won't be a good join. So have a mess around and have a play with that. But one of the things that you need to be aware of is because that angle isn't set, you do need to set it somehow. Otherwise, it's gonna move when you try and clamp it. So unlike when we made the barrel and you've got those angles set hard by the uh, chamfer that we cut and you can clamp that together. With these, they want to move. So we actually have to create some kind of form that we can clamp this into. And I'll show you a couple of the forms that I've made for this. These two pieces here are the forms that I used to create this object. Now you can see that I've got uh, a number of channels cut into these pieces. You'll have to ignore that outer one, it was a mistake, but these two inner channels are created with a 7mm router bit, a straight bit, and 7mm was wide enough to allow for the curve of this 6.4mm thick timber. If you wanted to do a much steeper curve or your boards were wider, you would need a wider channel because the steeper that curve, the uh, more space you need to accommodate for the changing timber direction. Obviously, if this was just a straight line, you could get away with a 6.4 mil channel, but you need to allow for that curve. So I've got two matching forms here. I basically feed the timber in like this, put both of them, one on each end. Now I cut out this nice curve shape afterwards on a bandsaw. So you'll have to imagine this as it was before I cut out that shape and it was essentially a rectangle or a square. And so that's how I could put those edges into that form, clamp it together and apply gluing pressure both from the ends just to hold the forms in and then also 
oh, this is falling apart in my hands. But you can also apply the pressure on each edge so that you're actually clamping that glue join. So in order to make these forms, you need to have some way of cutting that consistent curve and you need it to be identical on both sides. The way I did this was I had this curved chunk from another project that I had cut out on the bandsaw and then sanded smooth, but it was enough of a consistent um, piece that I could use it as a reference. And I clamped it onto my piece of plywood and then I used my trimming router with a seven mil bit, seven mil straight bit that was exposed by about five mil, so it was sticking out the bottom to run over that piece of timber until about two centimeters from the edge. You can see how it doesn't go all the way to the edge and I've drawn a line there. Now I mirrored that process on the second one by clamping it down and going from the other side so that I had these two pieces that were a mirror image of each other. Again, ignore that one, it was too wide for the form. Then I trimmed the bottom off where that original stencil was clamped and now I can use these as forms to sandwich all of those little planks of wood in there so they won't move around. Now, I did that first one, I was pretty happy with it. I've got a little bit more ambitious. So the one that we're gonna be building now is a more complex curve. You can see that this is a bit more of a wave shape. So it involves two curves going the opposite direction. So one that is convex and one that is concave. I'll just take this apart. To cut this double curve, I used that same little profile template and I did the first half to the center point, which I'd marked, you can see the line there. And then I flipped it over and did the second half from the opposite direction to the center point. Again, making sure that I didn't come all the way out of that end because we need that as a stop. And then I did the opposite side as a mirror image so that they are bookended, so that they, they're identical or symmetrical. That will allow us to clamp this thing together and get that complex shape. Now, you can use any kind of curve you like. You could do a freehand curve, but you need to create some sort of template that you can follow. So, as long as you, you could cut it out first on the bandsaw, if you wanted a really interesting wavy pattern, and then you could smooth that off with sandpaper, and then you could use that form to create, sorry, use that template to create your mirror image forms. This is gonna be a just a simple wave-shaped timber platter. I will curve these edges somewhat, as well as the complex curve going on through the board itself. Haven't quite decided what shape that's gonna be, but we'll decide that now as we're making it. These pieces are currently square edged. They haven't been beaded or fluted. So we will go through the setup of the route a bit now. Flute and bead all of these. You do a flute on one side and a bead on the other, kind of like tongue and groove, as you would imagine. And then we can go through the gluing process. All right, so the aim when we're cutting this flute is that we wanna make sure that the, uh, the cavity that is cut out has not cut into the upper or lower face. The reason we do that is because one, we don't wanna eat through all of our timber, but most importantly, if we have removed material from that upper and lower face, there'll be nothing to support this piece of timber as we pass over the route a bit, and there'll be a gap between the timber and the fence. So we need to retain that top and bottom edge even though we're cutting into this edge face. So before you set the height, set the fence so that the tip of the router bit is only just exposed. So it's only just gonna cut a small line. It's not gonna do the full cut just yet. This is just part of the setup process. Okay, so that's just gonna to touch and I'm just gonna lock that off for the time being. Now I can start to set my height and what I'm gonna do it's just visually drop this down so it looks like that flute bit is gonna to touch this edge right in the center. And I'll do a little test pass and make sure that there's the same amount of material left on the top and the bottom. And then I can start adjusting the fence just until I get that uh, material that's remaining to be just a hair's width thick, the smallest amount possible, and still retaining the material on the top and bottom faces. So we're basically just gonna creep up on both of those uh, settings, height and fence depth, 
and that seems to be the easiest way to do it. You can even you can do it on a scrap piece, which I have here, or you can even do it uh, carefully on one of your actual pieces, just by doing a little bit close to the edge. As long as you're careful, because you're creeping up on that measurement, you should never blow out one of those edges and you should be able to still use this piece. To make this a little easier for to demonstrate, I'm actually gonna color this face with a permanent marker and it'll make it a bit easier to see what material has been removed and what material remains. So these are still my test cuts to get the, uh, the depth of that flute, height and depth, at the, no, at this stage, I'm just setting the height first. Once the, the height is exactly in the center of this piece, then I'll adjust the depth of the fence. Okay, so I can see by looking at this that the router bit needs to go up a tiny bit. There's more material left on the top edge than on the bottom edge. So I'll just bring that up a little bit and try again. And then we should be able to set the depth of the fence. Okay, now that I've got the height even, I can see that the top and the bottom edges here, the texture that's remaining is the same amount. Now I can bring the fence uh, back to expose a little bit more of the blade uh, until there's almost none of that texture left. Now, because it's set correctly top and bottom, it should remain the same, the same amount should remain even though it gets smaller and smaller, the further the fence goes back. So I'll do a couple passes moving the fence incrementally back until it is exactly in the right position. So I've crept up on the depth of the fence until I can only just see a hair of that texture mark on the edges there. And that's about as thin as I can go before I'm gonna cut away that edge. So that means I've locked everything off and I'm ready to start cutting one flute on every single piece. I put the bead bit into the router table and now we're ready to set it up. The setup is really similar to what we did with the flute bit. First thing we're gonna do is set the fence so that only a tiny amount of the, that router bit is protruding past the fence, not the full amount. Uh, we're gonna lock that off temporarily and then we're gonna bring the height down until it looks like it's pretty centralized just by eye. I'm gonna put some uh, pencil or texture or whatever you want on the edge again so that I can see. We're gonna do a little test cut and instead of leaving material on the two outside edges. This time we want to leave material on the dead center, which is going to be the uh, top of that hill or that bead. And we want the amount of material left to be as small as possible while still being there. Because if we cut away too much, we're going to have the same problem where we have no material against the fence and we don't get a straight cut. Okay, I've set this up and you can see that there is still a small amount of blue texture remaining in this section here that little bit of texture remaining or whatever you've used to mark the timber shows us that we haven't cut all of it and we've left that center line of timber like we need. Now I'm gonna cut a bead on the uncut side of each of these pieces. Once you've cut all your beads and flutes, you can lay out all the pieces. You do lose some overall width once you cut the flutes and beads. I don't know exactly how much. It'd be like a few mil off every single piece. So you need to take that into account if you're, uh, if you're needing to get to an exact final position. Once you've laid all of these out, what you can do is just use a piece of timber to straighten the edge and lay some electrical tape in two strips along, not right on the ends, because we need the ends to be clear, but I don't know, 50 million from each end. Electrical tape is good because it has some stretch and we need this thing to stretch uh, to get the curves that we want. If you're gonna use masking tape, it doesn't have any stretch and you'd be left with a flat board, which is not what we're going for. So I'm gonna only tape up one side, then I'm gonna put glue in every single gap and then I'm gonna slide it into the forms 
apply a slight clamping pressure on the outside of the forms just to hold it into position and then I'm going to clamp on these edges to actually pressure those glue joints together. That's basically it for the router component of this video. You've seen the glue up. From here on out, basically what I will do is I'll trace out some sort of shape once it's all glued up, so I'll leave it for a couple of hours. I'll cut that out on the bandsaw and then just do a lot of sanding and then put some sort of oil on it. Now, basically the rest is up to you. You can do anything you like with this. It could be some just single giant curve. You could have curved components and straight components. Really, I just wanted to show you the process of how you could start to get these curves and then you can integrate them into your pieces. I did also make this little wooden object as an experiment using these same bits, so you can definitely make cylinders quite easily. Uh, just to have to apply some clamping pressure with a band rather than in a form. I can also imagine how you would use this to create a roll top desk. You have to make the forms in the same way and that would act as your sliders and these flute and bead bits would form a really nice uh, smooth fluid curving slat. You just need to attach something on the back to hold it all together like a piece of webbing or some type of fabric. But otherwise, have fun. They're a really interesting and useful little bit that allows you to do something which is very difficult with solid timber. If you don't have the capacity to bend wood, then this is the only other way that you're going to get these really nice sweeping curves. You can pick up these flute and bead sets online. You can click on the links below or you can visit uh, either of the stores in Perth and in Melbourne.